Yo, New York Yankees fans, yet again, it is Felix from NYNews.com. Like always, hola, como estas? NYNews, NYNews TV. Hey, Yankees fans, let's grade the New York Yankees' first half of the 2022 season. Then after that, we have a special guest, a friend of NYNews, the son of Ozzie Gein, Ozzie Gein Jr., He's going to pop up on here to give his predictions on the Major League Baseball All-Star game. So, let's get into it. Joey Gallo. Joey Gallo has been horrendous. 219 at-bats, an average of 164, just a 11 dingers, 23 RBIs. How many strikeouts does this guy have? 98. I mean, this guy has been an automatic out. Career low, on-base percentage. It's a miracle that Joy Gallo is still a Yankee. It's a miracle he hasn't been DFA'd. Are the Yankees waiting to get something back for him? I don't understand. Because you see, you can't trade Joy Gallo to a non-contending team because he's a free agent after the season. There's not going to be a trade where Joy Gallo is included for, let's say, uh, Andrew Benintendi an Ian Happ, because the Royals and the Cubs are not in contention. It may, that, that kind of trade makes absolutely no sense. That, oh, okay, we're going to take Joy Gallo along with these other players the Yankees include for the rest of the season. That can happen, but that's a pretty dumb decision. And an even more dumber decision is if a team in contention, trades for Joey Gallo and says, hey, we could fix this guy. I mean, pretty dumb considering his numbers, but he might might wake up and turn things around on another team. Could happen, who knows. But if he was on any other team with those kinds of numbers, he would have been DFA'd a long time ago. So the Yankees, everybody knows the Yankees need to improve uh, left field. With that being said, anyways, Joey Gallo's time as a New York Yankee is coming to an end, obviously. But, wow, what a surprise that it has taken this long. So moving along to center field. Obviously, Judge has been moving in and out, right field, center field. But let's talk about Aaron Hicks. You know, when Hicks is on and he plays well, he's a tremendous player. But when Hicks is on, it only lasts about... Two or three games. Or if we get lucky a week. Then blah, he's Aaron Hicks again. Let's take a look at his numbers. So far, 233 at-bats. Six dingers, 29 RBIs. Remember when he said he was a 40-40 guy? Just uh, <laughs> nine stolen bases. <laughs> we were half into the season. Then a 236 batting average. His on-base percentage is better than Gallo's. So comparing those two, Hicks has been the better player. But Hicks is still horrendous as well. He has made miscues in the outfield. I forgot what game it was where DJ LeMahieu called him off or whatever. And he missed two balls that could have easily been caught by him. Then some instances where he could have hit the cutoff main or thrown home, he didn't even attempt those. So again, just like Joy Gallo, Aaron Hicks has somewhat been an automatic out. Not more than Gallo. Gallo is just <laughs> the worst player ever that I've seen on the New York Yankees as a somewhat everyday player. For you old school fans, Pat Kelly had more of an impact playing on the New York Yankees than Joy Gallo has ever had. So center field, that's another position the Yankees need to improve upon. Aaron Hicks has a team-friendly contract. If the Yankees want to go ahead and, let's say, trade him away for damaged goods, let's say a player that the Yankees plug right away to the minor leagues, I mean, go ahead and do it. You could go out there and trade for Brian Reynolds. You could go out there and trade for Andrew Benintendi. You could go out there and trade for an Ian Happ. Hey, if the Yankees get rid of any of those guys, Gallo or Hicks, I'll be happy if they get rid of both of them. I'll be even more happier. Moving along to third base, Josh Donaldson. I love the guy in the clubhouse. He's one of my favorite Yankees, by the way. 
I've grown to like Josh Donaldson. I didn't like that trade to begin with. But once I saw the impact he had in that clubhouse, I said, hey, this guy has been the difference in the 2022 New York Yankees. It's obvious. But offensively, he has not been producing that much. I don't want to replace the guy, but Josh Donaldson is going to have to improve this second half of the season. Moving along to shortstop, IKF. IKF is just IKF. Defense is decent. If you ask me, it's blah. Hitting is decent. If you ask me, it's blah. IKF is just IKF. Sometimes he comes up with big hits. Sometimes he comes up with big defensive misplays. He's just all right. Is he a shortstop I want on a World Series championship caliber team? No. Is he a player I want the Yankees to replace? Yes. If you can, yes. If he was like, let's say, an Omar Vizquel, a defensive wizard, and didn't hit, then I'll say, great, leave him there. But offensively, he's so-so. No dingers, no power, no production. Just a few timely hits here and there. Again, shortstop is a position that the Yankees need to improve upon. And most certainly, they didn't with IKF. Moving along to second, Glaber Torres having a resurgence year, kind of. People could argue that he had, he's having or had an all-star caliber season thus far. Second base, Glaber Torres go hand in hand. So I have no complaints when it comes to second base. Or first baseman, Anthony Rizzo, no complaints there. If you ask me, he should have been an all-star. He has put up all-star caliber numbers. His batting average is kind of low, but power numbers are up. Hey, just put it like this. Numbers don't reflect what Rizzo has meant for the New York Yankees. This guy has been clutch for the Yankees. So no complaints from me when it comes to first base. Moving along, if you want to call him a super utility infielder, DJ LeMahieu, he's kind of having a decent season. Average is kind of up there. Hits uh, second to judge, I believe. He has been having a decent season, but not the kind of season that we have been used to when it comes to DJ LeMahieu. 2021, he was kind of the same way as well, but before that, he was MVP caliber. He was a machine, a batting champion. So this second half of the season, if DJ LeMahieu catches fire, look out. Because I've always said this, players with high averages reflect how good a team is. So if DJ LeMay, you could get his average, let's say over 300 and performs like the DJ LeMay, that the Yankees signed, this team is going to be two times better than they already are. And they're the best team in baseball. So obviously no complaints when it comes to DJ LeMay, a catcher, Jose Trevino, Kyle Higashioka, no complaints. When it comes to Jose Trevino, obviously an all-star. This guy grew up a Yankee fan. You can even see it when he plays the Red Sox. This guy is compassionate. When he knows the game is on the line, he knows what it takes to not only be a Yankee, but to be a New York Yankee fan and what the New York Yankee fans expect from New York Yankees players. So tremendous under the radar trade for the New York Yankees, originally trading Albert Abreu for him and then getting Abreu back. I, I like Abreu, by the way. Tremendous arm. Just a phenomenal pickup for the New York Yankees. Getting rid of Gary Sanchez was one of the best things the Yankees could have done. And even better than that, having Jose Torino. A great guy, a great player. He's one of the guys that could have fit in with the late 90s Yankees, that dynasty. Moving along to DH, John Carlos Stanton, who has been playing the outfield more recently this season. No complaints there. Big G is going to be Big G. No complaints because John Carlos Stanton shows up every time the Yankees make the playoffs. So the, I know I, I've trash-talked Stanton in the past, but he has proven me wrong when it comes to Big G come playoff time. Not to say he hasn't showed up this season because he absolutely has had. He has finally made the All-Star team as a New York Yankee. 
It should have happened a long time ago. Heck, I have made videos trash talking Major League Baseball saying, hey, John Carlos Stanton is one of the most recognizable faces in Major League Baseball. And I forgot what it was. I think he got snubbed for a close to 40 year old Nelson Cruz at the time. Made absolutely zero sense. You want to promote your younger guys. I know John Carlos Stanton is not that young anymore, but he was young at the time, younger at the time. It made absolutely no sense at the time, but congratulations to John Carlos Stanton finally making an all-star team with the New York Yankees. No complaint from me. Big G is Big G. Keep hammering away. As for Judge, what can we say? MVP Judge. As he goes, the Yankees go. As you see when the Yankees go on a little losing streak, lose a game here and there, it's because Judge has been carrying this team. When Judge doesn't do anything, it's obvious there's a strong chance that the Yankees are going to lose that game or even possibly lose that series. But luckily for us, luckily for the Yankees, Judge hasn't had those, you know, long stints of being cold. He's been hot for most of the season. You guys know the numbers? A leader in most of the stats in Major League Baseball? Obviously, no complaints from me. You got to be on drugs if you even remotely complain about Judge this season. This guy has been carrying the Yankees. Like I said, as he goes, the Yankees go. So let's hope MVP Judge continues to be MVP Judge. Even if he's not MVP Judge and contributes, that'd be great as well. Let's hope the Yankees show him the money. He has a great example when it comes to Freddie Freeman. He has a great example when it comes to Robinson Cano. Just look at what number team Cano is on at the moment. Judge needs to make sure that he knows everything that's being told to his agent. Moving along to pitching, I'm going to be honest here, folks. Nestor Cortez has been great. Montgomery has been great. So-so as well. Tyon has been absolutely horrible recently. You got Luis Severino going down. But if they're a World Series caliber team, I don't have that much confidence. I hate to say it because Nasty Nestor is an all-star. I don't have confidence in the Yankees, let's say they match up versus uh, Astros. Or let's say the Rays make the playoffs. Or let's say the Blue Jays make the playoffs. I don't have that much confidence in the Yankees handling those kinds of teams. Why? Because I've seen instances where the Yankees starting pitching has run out of gas. And Garrett Cole, I'm still on the fence when it comes to him in big games facing teams that just want to cut the Yankees' necks off. If I were the Yankees, if Luis Castillo is available, as it's been known he is, I'll go for Luis Castillo. Again, Nasty Nestor is an all-star, has been great for the Yankees. But, you know, so many games, these guys are going to lose gas. And having a repertoire like Cortez, he doesn't have much velocity. Oh, man. Like I said, when it comes to playoff time, the pitchers that have the most success are flamethrowers like a Justin Verlander, Max Scherzer, etc. That record is great. The Yankees have the best record, but they need to improve when it comes to starting pitching. If they don't, they have no chance when they get to the playoffs. Bullpen as well has a whole bunch of question marks. Litge, uh, Chapman, Loisega, he, he to start off the season, he's been so-so, but I have confidence in him. Overall, long-term, I think the bullpen currently is better off than the Yankees' rotation. What I mean by that, better off come playoff baseball but just like the starting rotation I do want to see the Yankees improve when it comes to their bullpen Clay Holmes another tremendous trade by Brian Cashman stole the closer role from Aroldis Chapman no complaints there Wandy Peralta has been a surprise he, I've seen him have great outings but the best arm besides Clay Holmes has to be Michael King a phenomenal guy to have in the bullpen before I close it out, the bench guys, Marin Gonzalez, great, great pickup. Love the guy. He reminds me of Luis Soho, Miguel Cairo, those kinds of players. 
And Matt Carpenter, what can you say? Having a comeback year, power numbers are ridiculous. He worked on his batting stance during the offseason. Great, great pickup by the Yankees. Great guy and a half off the bench. Let's not forget Aaron Boone. I've trash-talked Aaron Boone. The guys from NY News, we have all trash-talked Aaron Boone. But I'm beginning to love the guy. He's more passionate this season. He's been thrown out how many games? I think this guy has set a record how many times he's been thrown out. That's a pay-per-view style event every time Aaron Boone comes out to argue balls and strikes or argue with the umpires. So much props to Aaron Boone and his coaching staff. They have done a phenomenal job with the New York Yankees. And the same could be said about Brian Cashman. Everybody has bashed him, but Cashman and the moves he has made, I'll say outshadows the bad moves that he has made. So phenomenal job overall. I think I mentioned everybody, but if I left somebody out, leave your opinions in the comment section below. With that being said, this has been Felix from NYNews.com. Don't go anywhere because we have Ozzie Gann Jr., the son of White Sox great Ozzie Gann. Ozzie Gann Jr., a great, great baseball mind. He's like the rain man when it comes to Major League Baseball information. And he's going to have his predictions on today's Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Baseball All-Star Game. Baseball All -Star. Felix, thank you so much for having me on. Ozzie Guillen Jr. from Guillen Baseball All-Star Game. So many great memories. One of my favorite events of the year in Major League Baseball. I got the American League and the over at seven and a half. I also have Jose Ramirez winning the MVP. Those are my picks. I got a couple other prop bets, but if you want more, always follow us at Guillen Baseball. Follow our YouTube channel. You're going to get some more insights here with my main man, Felix and us and talking baseball again American League I always go the American League seven and a half with the over check us out soon have a good one enjoy the game before it hits the front page